Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the activity of a radioactive source. So let's get started. It says here that when a radioactive source decays, it emits a particle or a ray. And remember, we saw that was the definition of radioactive decay in the theory video for the atom. This is a random process, so to help you visualise this, I'm going to show you a quick animation. So imagine you've got all these nuclei in their source, and they're going to start decaying randomly. So what we mean by decaying, remember, is they are going to emit an alpha particle, a beta particle, or a gamma ray to become more stable. So if we play the animation, you'll notice that when they disappear, that is them decayed. So you'll notice it's a random process. There's no telling which one's going to decay next. And it started off quite fast to begin with, and now it's slowed down a bit in terms of the decay. And the rate at which these nuclei are decaying at any given time can be given a name. And this is called the activity of the radioactive source. So we give the activity of a radioactive source the symbol A, and this is defined as the number of decays or disintegrations per second. So you can word it as either number of decays or the number of disintegrations per second. So this gives us an idea of how quickly the radioactive source is decaying. And we've got an equation for this. So we're saying that activity is given the symbol capital A, and this equals capital N divided by T. A equals N over T, where A is activity measured in becquerels, capital B, small q. N is the number of decays, which have no units because it's just a number, and T is the time measured in seconds. So a common multiple choice question might be, what is one becquerel equivalent to? Well, one becquerel is equal to one decay per second, and we can see that from the equation. Because remember, activity is measured in becquerel, so if we have one becquerel equals one nuclear decay, over time which is measured in seconds. So that's one becquerel equals one decay per second. So you could also be asked something like, what is meant by the statement an activity of 20 mega becquerels? And I've just used 20 as an example here. Well, the way you would answer this is you would state that it means that 20 times 10 to the six nuclei decay every second or each second, or there are 20 million nuclear disintegrations each second. And all we're doing there is converting the 20 mega becquerels into just becquerels, so getting rid of the mega prefix and that means we're writing 20 times 10 to the 6 and then we're just relating it to the definition of activity so we're seeing how many decays are happening each second so we're using the number and giving the definition of activity so make sure you do that if you see a question like this lastly we're just going to look at how you can simply measure the activity of a radioactive source and the way you do this is you take a geiger muller tube connected to a counter a bit like what we did for background radiation but then you would also make sure you had a radioactive source present, otherwise there'd be no way to determine the activity of that radioactive source. So the activity of the radioactive source can be measured using the source itself, the geiger muller tube counter and stopwatch. So the stopwatch is the only thing not shown on the picture. The geiger muller tube detects the radiation given out by the radioactive source. The counter records and displays the number of hits on the geiger muller tube representing the number of decays. So we're seeing that every time there is a decay, an alpha particle, beta particle, or gamma ray emitted from the radioactive source, that is passing through the thin mica window of the Geiger-Muller tube, which will then be detected as one count on the counter. And the stopwatch measures the length of time for which the Geiger-Muller tube is exposed to the source. So what you would then take is your number of decays, which we're saying is the same as the number of counts on the screen, divided by the length of time over which the source was exposed to the geiger muller tube for. So that would give you your number of decays and your time. So to find the activity, you would simply do A equals N over T to get your activity of the source, and that would be measured in becquerels. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.